something, thirty something, thirty something, thirty something. Hi guys, welcome back to Thirty Somethings with your girl Chris White and Mel B. Thank you so much to everyone who have subscribed, everyone who watched the Insecure Review. We appreciate all the love and all the support. Yes, y'all. I appreciate my friend and family so much. I know a lot of you all didn't even have YouTube channels and you went and made an account just to subscribe and that means so much to us. It does. So today we're going to be discussing perception in, in your 30s and specifically career. Um, Melanie, we're going to start with you. Tell us what profession you're in and what are your degrees? I am a registered nurse. I've been a registered nurse for the last nine years. Mm -hmm. I've done um, different specialties such as med surge, pediatrics, palliative, mental health, and now I'm working as a utilization review nurse. Um, I went to Alcorn State University where I got my BSN degree in nursing, and I am currently working on my MSN degree at the University of South Alabama. Hey, I see you, girl. I see you over there. Well, for me, I am an immigration attorney. I currently own a firm here in Dallas, Texas named Michelle Law Group. Um, I have two licenses, one in Texas and one in Mississippi. As a little girl, Christy, did you know that you were going to be a lawyer? So crazily, I actually did. Um, as a little girl, I have a crazy story. At nine, I was uprooted from a black school and sent to an all white school. Um, there I learned the do's and don'ts of the white world. And I learned how unjust the world can be. And so I knew that my purpose was going to be a justice leader or some type of justice fighter. And so I chose to be a lawyer and I saw it through. Um, it's not also ironic that I chose to practice immigration law. I was an illegal student, you know, for the majority of my, um, I guess, educational career. So, of course, it would be... We're illegal? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Of course, it would make sense for me to pretty much dedicate my, my career to helping others that are like that and, and have that viewpoint and they're illegal immigrants here living in America. But I know that um, some people don't come into their purpose that early on in age. And yeah, I, I, just, I, I just did because of, you know, traumatic situations that happened to me. So, Mel, what about you? Did you kind of always know you were going to be a nurse? No. <laughs> no, I did not always know that I was going to be a nurse. Actually, if you asked me about when I was a little girl, mm -hmm. anybody that knew me from back then knew that I loved singing in the choir. I just loved music class, Miss Creel. I was more of a creative child. Mm -hmm. You know, I like to write raps, poem. Me and my cousins would perform on our trampoline and just do little concerts in the neighborhood. So that's kind of what I wanted to be if you want to be real. But you know, as I got older and it was time to go to college, I did decide to go ahead and do pre-pharmacy. And not because I just had some deep passion for pre-pharmacy. It's just that I knew that pharmacists were successful and I knew I wanted to be a successful person and make money. But I really didn't know a lot about it. So going into college, my first couple of years, I really struggled and I had to find my way to nursing. So once I decided to do pre-nursing, at Mississippi State, and I was able to transfer to Alcorn State University. I was on my path, I got my BSN degree, and I was able to go ahead and graduate and become a nurse, which I think was the best choice, but there were some struggles trying to get to that choice. Well, first I wanna say thank you, and thank you to all the nurses and all you healthcare providers out there that have been putting yourself on first line and just been doing anything you know to progress us um during this epidemic thank you so much um but you mentioned that you actually went to school your major was pharmacy um and you kind of mentioned that the reason why you chose that major was because pharmacy is a known successful profession do you think mm -hmm. kids or students now choose majors based on what they see as success 
yeah. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> yes, they do. I think if you were to ask a lot of people that even went to school um, when we were at Mississippi mm -hmm. State through from Madison Central, maybe even some of our classmates from high school, a lot of them would probably say, like, I had those struggles. You know, mm -hmm. luckily, Greasy, you had your, your plan together. And, you know, and a lot of times that is, you know, a good plan and, and people can do it that way. But a lot of times, more often than not, it's not the case. So mm -hmm. I think a lot of people may have graduated in degrees that they're not using, um, mm -hmm. may have gone to school and got all those student loans and then even graduate with a degree. And mm -hmm. that can be hard for some people to take in. You know, that can create despair or, or depression yeah. because you're thinking that this is the way to go to get to, like, if I do this, I'm going to have this outcome. If I go to college, mm -hmm. I'm going to be mm -hmm. successful. I'm going to be able to provide mm -hmm. for my family. I'm going to make good money. And that's just simply not true. So what do you feel about when your parents tell you or when parents tell kids that the only way to be successful is if you go to college? I, I think that I think that that is a false narrative. Mm -hmm. But I think the reasoning behind it, it comes, it stems from love. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of times, some of us are first generational college goers you know so our parents just want us to be able to be successful and that's the narrative that they know if you go to college you'll be able to get a good paying job so i don't fault parents you know for bringing us up that way and they did the best that they could they did a great job you know yeah. because it is we are successful but i do feel like as people evolve and you learn more which i feel like i'm learning more in my 30s it's our job to try to educate to teach the more from behind us. exactly so I honestly do feel like we are using this platform and I would love to continue to use this platform to just get the word out there, you know, for the audience or the people that we have around us, because, you know, you never know who may be going through something like kids who are in college. Now they may not know the way. So yeah, definitely you're right. Gotta you're so right. Full conversation with right. our kids. Because there is way more than one route to be successful. And I remember being in high school and there being a trade school and a trade school being an option. But because I thought trade school equaled something negative, I didn't mm -hmm. understand that it was actually something entrepreneurial. And the first time I even heard the word entrepreneur was actually in college. And it was mm -hmm. from my boyfriend at the time. He was taking an entrepreneur skills class. And I was like, what's an entrepreneur? <laughs> so yeah crazy how we do not educate our kids on making sure that they have the skills and the and the tools that they need in America to not necessarily to be dependent upon mm -hmm. the government or on the system. Um, I was listening to the Breakfast Club the other day and there was a doctor on there and he was just talking about pretty much how white men or white people teach their kids how to work for themselves while black people teach their kids how to work for them, which is, you know, just crazy. Yeah, well, you know, I, I, as I said, I think like how our family members have brought us up is because they were trying to do things, you know, as well as they knew how to get us to this point. And of course, it's our um, responsibility to do that for the next generation. So the first step would be not to rely, like you say, you thought the trade school was something negative. Well, because it wasn't marketed to you or told mm -hmm. to you in a way to make you look at it like, hey, there's nothing wrong with pull up. If I can get a trade, that means I have a skill mm -hmm. when I can have my own business. Mm -hmm. So it is our mm -hmm. job as Black people and Black folks that have degrees or have their own businesses as you have to kind of let people know okay these are the trades that you can do this is a business that you can have and hey you can get your degree but once you get your degree do you want to work at the hospital or do you want to have your own nursing services do mm -hmm. you want to do this you know I think we have to start talking more about being on definitely the because honestly people shy away when you tell them hey you should work for yourself and it's because of the heavy responsibility. I'm not going to lie. I never wanted to work for myself. I never thought that I would be working my own business. And mainly because I was super scared of the responsibility that it held. I did not understand <coughs> it at all because nobody told me about the benefits, right? So now being in a position where I understand the benefits, I, I'm trying to make sure, like you said, have those conversations with my mm -hmm. little nephews and have those conversations with people. Don't shy away from things like your taxes. Like, don't shy away from things like um, 
credit to debit, 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 debit ratio. Don't shy away from things like investments or the stock market. Like those are things mm -hmm. that we need to teach our kids about at a very early age, how to handle money. Like what is, what is the purpose of the bank? You know, those are the things that you need to be teaching your kids at an early age, just because of the simple fact that we live in a capitalistic world. Most definitely. And I, when you talk about stock market, investments, honestly, I, maybe the last two years, that's when I even started talking about things like that. So I'm still learning. And that's why I would like to have people on this platform or that's where they're specialized because I've been blessed enough to be in network with people who specialize in finance, mm -hmm. who specialize in, you know, how to get to the next level. Yeah, well, you talked about you just about? you talked about just playing spades in your apartment. I mean yeah. in your home and how well in your apartment when you were when you were in school with these kids and now in your home and, and now people are you there's people that you're amongst are like lawyers and doctors mm -hmm. and and you know so why aren't we having these conversations? Why As a culture, we don't do that. As a culture, sometimes I feel like we don't trust each other. I don't want nobody to know about how much money I make a year. You know what I'm saying? And, mm -hmm. and, I, and I, probably for reason, good reason. So, but if we all come together and start helping each other, like say, for instance, I have a real estate person that's mm -hmm. very close to me. I have a person that works at the bank and is a financer. In mm -hmm. other cultures, if you're like, say, for instance, you have a child and I see her grow up, well, little Christy, I'm a finance it's person. Sick. I know to tell you what to do. With the baby. That's she how they do in other doesn't cultures. Want to other practice cultures. We don't really want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. We don't really want to, you know, tell our personal business. And I think it's historical. It may be from the past and, and, and slavery and just all the things that black people have gone through in this country. We don't trust each other. Mm -hmm. We don't trust others, but we're going to have to get over that. So... I just want to say thank you to all and everyone that is tuning in. And like Melby said, if you know anyone that is very good at conveying, you know, finances or know anyone that's good at conveying what tax deductions are mm -hmm. and things of that nature, anything, what rents are, uh, stocks, I, um, anything, I think that we would love to see you on the show and we would love to have you. Love that. And I, I definitely just want to yeah. encourage, you know, the people our age who now have kids. It's like my eyes are open to a whole different light now because I have a daughter. It's like, okay, I, I, I did this much. I want police to go further or mm -hmm. the things that I know now at 30 something, I want her to know 30. when she's 15 because that's what these other cultures they're doing. Their kids know what I'm learning now at 30. Well, well that's what generational wealth is. is. That's what yeah, generation. You know, if you're at the dinner table and you're talking to your kids and they say, well, mom, I want to be a, a doctor. Why do you want to be a doctor? Mm -hmm. You know, what's the purpose of you want to be a doctor? Where do you want to live? These are the questions we have to start asking our kids. And let's stop shying away because we are having superficial conversations with them. And we just have to dig a little bit deeper. Mm -hmm. So that mind, you know, unfortunately, the world that we live in, we got to go ahead and start talking to our kids yeah. early. The, work, the playing field is not fair. It's not level. So we have to go ahead and start preparing them earlier because other cultures are definitely doing that. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So thank you so much to everyone who tuned in today. And if you have any comments, please write them below. And if you are new, please subscribe. Subscribe! <laughs>